Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to you bringing insights into the ever-changing high-frequency currents now baiting the planet and their effect on us all. The source of vital information for the evolving human being. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Sacred Space, empowered by the flow of life. In prior Stairway to Heaven episodes, we've indicated the Sun is moving into a higher frequency portion of the galaxy, causing the plasma on its leading edge to become more highly charged. This increase in light is expressed through the Sun's electromagnetic field and translated to the Earth's field wherever the two fields cross. The new frequency information is then carried to the core of the Earth by way of her electromagnetic field from which it radiates to her surface. This makes the evolving wavelengths available to humans. However, through our stubborn commitment to the status quo, our environments are impacted and restricted by our intent and will, causing them to hold a lower frequency, where they will remain unless we actively align with the increased light now available. Where can we access this alignment, one might ask? It's contained and expressed by the earth and the beauty of the natural world. Yet, as beauty is ground to dust under the millstone of expedience and serenity shattered by progress, we find ourselves increasingly isolated from the splendor of the natural world. As humans left the sanctuary inherent in nature, art, music, and poetry became our links between spirit and the mundane. Now even those are being eradicated from our environment as the arts are eliminated from schools and workplaces. Beauty is seen as an indulgence to be replaced by the practical cubicle. Art is so devalued, artists are starving, while iron and concrete grow like malignant tumors. Whether it's encountered in a forest, a cathedral, a kiva, or garden, most of us can appreciate the power and beauty of sacred space. While sacred space is the norm in the natural world, it's become a rare commodity in modern day environments. In years past, many cathedrals were built on druid sites. These sites, in turn, were built on natural ley lines, aligning the structures with the flow emanating from the Earth's core, using sacred geometry. Feng Shui was used to direct the natural flow of the Earth within structures. These practices, and many others, considered the powerful flow of nature that we have since come to ignore, to our great de detriment. The deeper mysteries of any religious practice incorporate principles designed to create sacred space in which to worship. Monks cloistered themselves in sacred space to enhance their spiritual connection. These sanctuaries were rich in gardens and natural beauty, while totally void of electronics and other human constructs and distractions. There are other similarities in various practices that build the high frequency of sacred space by engaging with the natural world holy water, stone statuary, and the steam in a sweat lodge all represent and draw on the four elements of water, air, earth, and fire. These natural elements are used to set space and raise frequency. Prayers of gratitude, hymns, and chants engage the intent of the worshipers, adding to the uplifting environment. The sacred space need not be confined to a religious practice. Every activity of our lives can be enhanced and supported by tending to the sanctuary of our environments. This incorporates the added benefit of staying attuned to the rapidly increasing frequency of our times. As we attune ourselves to the more expansive frequency, our auric fields also expand. The result? Evolution of consciousness. When our consciousness evolves, so does our intelligence and creativity. Soon, the overwhelming problems we face become solvable as we step into our role as co-creators of reality. In this episode, we'll draw upon the altar, a tool used in one form or another by most cultures to align with the flow of nature and bring its high frequency into any environment. We'll cover the essential principles so you can design a personal altar best suited to your unique needs, lifestyle, and preferences. When using an altar to set space, clearing the environment from past influences is a great starting point. This can be achieved through smudging with various herbs such as sage or resins like copal. There is no substitute for physically cleaning the space from top to bottom. However, the attitude with which you do this is extremely important. If you resent cleaning, guess what? You're filling all any space you clean with resentment. 
set aside your dislike and embrace the task with love and appreciation for the state space you're about to create. Another way of clearing is attending to the stuff in your environment. All the articles in your space include various harmonics of frequency, some more helpful than others. For instance, clutter is not only unsightly, but haphazard, blocking the flow of life and resulting in low frequency. Things you have no resonance with, like a gift that was given with agenda from a person you don't really like, can also compromise frequency. Even if you like the article itself, it still carries the agenda of the giver seasoned by your dislike. I go more into detail on the topic of managing stuff in the Stairway to Heaven episode entitled The Blessing Way. Beauty and your appreciation of it is high frequency. When designing the location in which you'll be constructing your altar, keep an eye to beauty, including aesthetic and pleasing colors and articles. I'm not suggesting you consult a designer, but rather use things that appeal to you personally. You'll naturally be drawn to colors and fit frequencies that best support you and your intent. Choose all the articles you'll use on your altar with your preferences, grace, and beauty in mind. One of the major purposes of an altar is to help become centered. Dance, martial arts, gymnastics, and almost every, every other form of disciplined movement have one thing in common. Between every maneuver, there's a vital, necessary return to center. Without this return to center, balance is lost and the routine disintegrates. In the neutrality of the present moment, all future movement is available. By coming from center, we're realigning with the flow of nature, and all our resources become available to be directed towards any given goal. The art of creating sacred space is one of returning to center. The more we renew ourselves through this return, the less our lives disintegrate. One of the first steps in introducing spirituality back into your life and work is creating a space that supports this return to center. Sacred space is created through re-establishing balance, unity, and wholeness. The balance between masculine and feminine, between heaven and earth, the seasons, directions, the elements, can all be brought into play to achieve this end. All of this and more is represented on your altar. The altar is used to cast a circle. Casting a circle or calling in the directions is basic to all spiritual practices. It creates a centered, balanced environment that draws on the earth and our place on it to align us with nature's flow, enhance our frequency, and with it, our personal power. To cast a circle, one must orient to the seven directions, east, south, west, north, earth, sky, and center, or heart. If you're setting space in a particular room, establishing a reference point for the directions can be done by setting an altar. To build an altar, we'll use some basic tools, but remember, the tools used are just that, tools. The master can set space with or without them. Like most rituals, the tools become a frame of reference to use to focus your intent. The tools needed for this basic altar are altar cloth, candle holder, candle, objects to represent the four directions, stones or small statuary work well, earthen bowl, water, sage, shell or a bowl to burn the sage in, matches or a lighter, a rattle to call in the directions, and a compass to establish magnetic north. Once you've cleared your space, as we've discussed, cleanse each of your tools in turn before you set them in place. For this exercise, we'll use smudging with sage smoke. Each act is performed with reverence, gratitude, and quiet deliberation. The ceremony of setting sacred space is all about being in the moment. Stay totally involved with the task at hand, rather than thinking about even the next step of your ritual. After running it through the sage smoke, set out the altar cloth to define the space that's to be your altar. One builds power in the altar by honoring and bringing in the energies of the seven directions. Use a compass to place the altar cloth on the floor or table that you've chosen to use to identify the directions. If there's a directional print on the cloth, set the top of the cloth facing north. This will orient the corners of the cloth to the northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. 
Male and female are honored by the candle and candle holder, respectively. Run the candle through the smoke and bless it with the energy of sky by saying, I bless you with the power of Father Sky. Run the candle holder through the smoke and bless it with the energy of Earth by saying, I bless you with the power of Mother Earth. Then put them together, holding in mind the sacred union representing passion and co-creation. This will represent the power of male-female balance on your altar. Establish the center by setting the candle and candle holder in the center of the altar cloth and blessing it to represent heart. This is accomplished by saying, I bless you heart, as you place it, place it in the center of your altar. It's important to represent the four elements in your altar. An earthen bowl of water works well for the earth and water elements. Air is already present, and the candle, when lit, holds the fire. When placing the next items on your altar, it's customary to start in the east, the place of sunrise and beginnings, and work clockwise to each of the other directions. Starting in the east and working clockwise, place the four articles you've chosen, one in each of the four directions, blessing the article to its direction as you set it on the altar. Do this by saying, I bless you with the power of east and so on. Finally, set the earthen bowl of water in the northwest on your altar cloth. You now have the basic structure of your altar. Next is activation. To do this, you'll call in each of the directions in turn. Facing east, shake your rattle and call, Spirit of the East, please join me. Then face south, shake your rattle and call, Spirit of the South, please join me. Do the same for west and then for north. Looking down to the earth, shake your rattle and call Mother Earth, please join me. Looking up, call Spirit of Father Sky, please join me. Finally, put your hand over your heart, shake your rattle and call Spirit of Heart, please join me. Once you've called in all the directions, light the candle and state, it has begun. You have now established balanced connection with the flow of life to support and enhance all that you do. I do this simple ritual before every one of my radio broadcasts, when I film for TV, or I'm teaching a class. From this environment, all I do comes from a pal balanced, powerful place and carries the alignment into the world. When you're done with your chosen task, give a prayer of gratitude to close your altar. Spirits, I thank you for your surround, support, and guidance, and now release you. Those that wish to stay and protect and guide me are most welcome and greatly appreciated. Then state, it is ended, and blow out the candle. If you're setting this altar to be left unattended, such as to support a fearful child in their sleep, in the interest of safety, you can replace the actual candle with an electronic one. Remember, these are just tools to help anchor your intent. Your intent, combined with the earth connection and the flow of life, is the power. By using an electronic candle, you can leave your altar open and unattended all day, starting each day by opening your altar and ending each night by closing it. Being mindful of your intentions for the day when opening your altar can direct balanced power to your purpose. End the day with prayers of gratitude for the support and all that came your way to serve your intent. This may seem overly simplistic, but through the faithful performance of this ritual, you'll become more focused and conscious in your alignment with the flow of life and the power contained therein. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiecka, on the Stairway to Heaven, where we provide updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. As I'm sure you've noticed, not only do the Stairway of Heaven episodes stand alone, but they weave together to form a map to evolution and personal empowerment as we enter the new era. To revisit this or any of our past episodes, visit our archives at www.stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. If you'd like to find out more about me, my school, and the evolutionary tools we offer, visit www.findyourpathhome.com. Until next time. May you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now. <laughs>